There's a joke in gliding circles that if we'd invented winch launching today, it wouldn't be allowed. I go gliding and ride the winch launch at Ashford and Kenley and love every minute of it. I've been gliding before but never experienced a winch launch and so the Kent Gliding Club asked me if I'd like to try one. Well, it would have been rude to turn such a generous offer down. Now it's Peter Mather that's invited me along to Chalock to the Kent Gliding Centre here and this is the machine that we're going to be flying in today. Tell me about it. Um, well, it's a, a Puchas, it's a Polish built glider. Uh, it's one of our three two-seater training gliders. We have two K21s and we have a Puchas. A Puchas and K21, it's the different manufacturers' offerings for the set to do the same sort of job, which is a basic glass fibre training glider. Can you tell me the specifications of the aircraft? Uh, I mean, in, in, in powered flight, we'd want to know all the speeds and everything else. And uh, what, what, how would you sort of characterise the specifications of this? Um, it's it's um, a fairly um, modest performance. Uh, it's got a glide angle of about 1 in 35, something like that. To give you some perspective, my single-seater glider has got a glide angle of 1 in 45. Um, it will achieve that at uh, its best glide at a, at a speed of, a, of um, about 51, 52 knots. And that's the sort of speed that you're aiming to be cruising at, is it? Uh, it would depend. Um, if uh, The thing about... Um, uh, flying cross-country in gliders is that you temper your speed according to the conditions. So if you want to fly a long distance or if you want to beat somebody in a competition you want to fly as fast as the conditions will allow. So obviously if you fly faster you won't get such a, a good glide angle but if it's a strong thermic day then and you're fairly confident that you can get a climb then you'll fly a little bit faster. Now the conditions today feel very still, um, not a lot of energy in the air I don't think today, and um, very little wind, so not perfect for flying. Not perfect for, for, for gliding, for gliding of course, true. Yeah. We, we like the, the um, atmosphere to be bubbling away like the water in a, in a kettle, um, and that's what, um, where, we get the, where the fun comes. Uh, but today isn't a bad day, the visibility isn't going to be particularly good, but to, for, for our purposes, to introduce winch launching and for early training, um, it's, it's fine. Because I have done some gliding before, I think you might have seen, but it was, it was from a, a tug. So I haven't experienced the winch launch. So that was particularly something that I was keen to experience and, and why I think you invited me to, to Chalak as my yeah. local gliding site here. Um, and so run me through what, what you're planning, you're an instructor. So That's run correct. me through what you're planning to sort of demonstrate for me today. Right, well, um, on our first flight, I will fly the launch and we'll go through the phases of the, the launch. Um, there's, there's a joke in gliding circles that if we'd invented winch launching today, it wouldn't be allowed. But if we treat it with respect, and it's very important that we treat it with respect and we know what we're doing, it's a good, safe, cheap way of, of, of getting a glider in the air. So there are... Um, if you like, three or four phases to the winch launch. There's the initial ground run, which generally with a winch launch doesn't um, last very long. Uh, we'll be looking to keep the wings level with the ailerons and the glider straight on the ground with the, the rudder. Um, we will be very careful that uh, if we lose aileron control in that early part of the launch, then we release. Um, and uh, that will... Um, prevent any um, unfortunate occurrences in the early part of the launch. Then as we accelerate, I will be looking for the glider to be accelerating past 50 knots towards 55 before I rotate the, the glider progressively into the climb. So when you're on that ground roll and you've just started rolling, are you stick back, stick neutral? Well, in terms of um, elevator, that is. It depends on the glider. Right. Some of, if you are flying a light uh, vintage wooden glider, some of those gliders you would have the stick right on the front stop. Uh, with these gliders, uh, fairly neutral. Mm. Um, 
And are you push as you're gaining speed? Are you putting in a bit more um, down elevator to keep you keep you down and build the speed? You're just flying it in the, in the normal way. Mm. You must be careful that you don't allow the glider to leap off the ground. Mm. If you have a um, uh, a cable break at that point, and your no nose is pointing at the the sky, then uh, you could stall and you wouldn't have sufficient height to, to recover. So that's why we emphasise it's a progressive rotation into the climb. But you're getting some pretty swift acceleration there. You are, yes. So it's all happening very, very quickly, isn't it? It is, yes. Um, and so you're in the ground roll, you're waiting for 50 to 55 knots, I think you mm -hmm. said, rotate. Yep. Talk, talk me through the, 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 the climb, and I've seen some of them going up here like a rocket. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, a, a little tip when you're, in the, when you're in the aircraft the first time, don't look out of the front because all you'll see is sky and it will feel as if you're going up vertically. So look along the wings and you'll get a better angle, a, appreciation of the, the angle that we're, we're climbing at. And are you controlling that angle of climb? Yes. Or you are. Yeah. And what are you aiming for then? You're aiming to keep a speed or an we're, attitude? We're, we're, we're aiming to... Um, the, the key thing to winch launching is sufficient speed. Mm. So I will be keeping uh, uh, an eye on the, the ASI to make sure that the speed doesn't drop below 55 knots. Um, if it does for any appreciable length of time, then I will, I will um, take that as a launch failure and we will treat it as a, as, as a failed launch. All right, so cable on please. Okay, Canopy is closed and locked. Air brakes are closed and locked. Are closed and locked. So I've got the, the stick yep. more or less central. Mm -hmm. I'll be keeping the glider straight with the rudder pedals and the wings level with the A-wings. <laughs> the acceleration is off the scale and the climb, well, it feels near vertical. So I'm increasing the pressure on the stick as we come up. You see the nose will start to be pulled down. Yeah. Oh, that there we go. We probably broke the wheat link, but never mind. That that was insane. <laughs> <laughs> you, you enjoyed that. Didn't you? <laughs> Everything happens so, so quickly, and the adrenaline rush so intense, I'm left feeling as if I couldn't fly the launch myself. But as you'll see later, I do get the hang of it. We're getting a bit low, so we'll go on to our downwind leg. Okay. Yeah, we're right, yeah. I'll just let people on the ground know that. Charlie traffic, golf, Charlie kilo, downwind lot. So as I say, we're a bit low, so I don't want to get as too far away from the airfield. You know, notice as we go come down we've got a little bit of zero sink here. So again I can afford to, to ease out a little bit. See we have hardly lost any height at all on the downwind leg. Yeah. Okay. 100 so feet. We're more or less at our low key area so we'll go on to our, our diagonal leg. And that's enough, we can just keep the, the launch point in sight. I'm aiming to land on the runway there. Onto a base leg. Now we do our final turn. About 500 feet, so we're well above our 300. Set up the speed. While overshooting, so I'm going to apply full air. Full air brake, no, about there, I think. I'm using as the, our reference point the three dots at yeah. the end of the of the runway there. Okay, I think we're just undershooting those just a little bit. Oh, I'm happy about that. We're going to get in. Thinking about my round out now. There we go. just a crazy experience it really is well the thing is I mean I've been doing it for the best part of 30 years um, but even so you know my heart is beating a little bit faster as we do that 
and I think that's all to the good. You need to be on the ball when you're doing a winch launch. From Ashford to Kenley, and from a civilian gliding club to the RAF's Volunteer Gliding Squadron. They have some plush new facilities here where they introduce air cadets to gliding. But compared with the way civilian clubs work, things are very different. They do it the RAF way, and each day begins with a very formal briefing. With the Met in mind, we're going to go with runway 20 with a right-hand circuit for when the wind comes around to 180, 160. We follow the same principles as a, as a frontline RF squadron would. You know, you brief in the morning, you know, uh, paperwork is all very similar uh, and everything else. So, so it's a fantastic grounding in aviation, really. And that this is every time we fly, we, we brief this. And then you'll see later when we fly, there's certain procedures we go through on the airfield before we even get in an aircraft as well, which is all part of the briefing process. Does that take the fun out of it? No, I would say it's not. It, it's, it's, it's there for a reason. It's a good process, a good safety process. So no, you get used to it and, and it, you, know, you understand why it's there. The Volunteer Gliding Squadron has been through some difficult few years. The fleet of Grob 103 Viking gliders was grounded in 2014 because of concerns about their airworthiness. The Covid pandemic delayed their return to the skies, but now a smaller but no less motivated squadron has emerged. But why does the Ministry of Defence believe it's important to continue funding these activities? Not only is it a good recruitment tool for the Air Force, um, it's well known and well documented that the calibre of people that come through the Air Cadets and through the VGS world provide the Air Force with a good start for management positions within the Air Force, so senior NCO and officer positions, as well as people who join as mechanics and suppliers and all the other jobs in the RAF. It provides social skills and life skills that they just wouldn't get anywhere else. And obviously there's a wider benefit to the country. So the, the Air Force has um, that in mind with the cadet forces. Um, obviously it's quite good for the government wow. in uh, providing those life skills to people that, is particularly in areas such as uh, inner London, um, kids wouldn't, wouldn't have those opportunities anywhere else. So it is, you know, it's a great thing for the youth uh, to, to have access to. Even though the weather at Kenley isn't brilliant today, I'm going to see if I can fly the winch launch under the careful supervision of my instructor, Flight Lieutenant Sean Link, who invited me along. So here and yeah, here. Yeah, excellent. And then it's super. 45 degrees. That's it. After a very thorough run through the checklist, I was strapped in and Sean demonstrated a takeoff while I followed through on the controls. Take up slack. So as you've seen before on a glide launch, the cable will start to go tight now uh, as the winch driver is signalled by the uh, launch point caravan. All I'm looking to do on the launch is keep the wings level using aileron, the aircraft balance on the main wheel and steer with rudder. So there's the cable going tight now, so all out. So I've got a little bit of left rudder in. As we're accelerating, we're keeping that back pressure to maintain balance on the main wheel. We're airborne, we're 50 knots clear of the ground, we're accelerating. I'm just letting the aircraft do the work into the full climb. Roughly your knees are going to be roughly on the horizon and our speed is 55 to 60 knots. We can accept 55 to 65 however. So we're going up, there's 800 feet. We're into cloud now so we're going to release the tension. We're going to lower the nose, wait for 50 knots and we're just going to manoeuvre out the clouds. We're still clear below, we can just use the air brakes just to pop ourselves back down. Back on the ground, learning to operate the winch today is Staff Cadet 18-year-old Zach Kane. He's been in the Air Cadets for five years now. I'd say what attracted me was my ambition to fly. I want to become a pilot, um, preferably in the services, and just seemed like a brilliant way to get a bit more knowledge than that. and then. On top of that, uh, have a bit more leadership training. So, uh, especially the longer you stay in cadets, you get promoted, you get put in charge of uh, leading activities or just generally on a 
squadron evening, taking the activities, what they might be, might be teaching lessons. Quite a few cadets will go on to careers in the forces. Um, it will definitely help you out, It'll, even in any career. So you have control. After observing Sean's demonstration, it was now my turn to see if I could control the glider during the launch and bring us back down to land safely. Wings level. And then cable on. Cable on. And then with your left hand, we're going to open the release by pulling it towards you. Excellent. So we're clear ahead, we're clear above. Uh, and there's no obstructions left to right, so ask the wing to pull you for all clear above and behind. All clear above and behind. Still clear ahead, so you can give the uh, indication for take up slack. What was that? Uh, left hand and your index finger. That's it. And then hand back towards the release, looking ahead. And the second command will be um, when the cable goes is all out, and that's again left hand and two fingers. Now, all out. That's it. So stick with the rudder. Left rudder, wasn't it? That's it. Good. Stick forward a little bit. There you go. Wait for 50 knots. Clear the ground. Excellent. That's it. So keep keep that nose up, and the speed will come on. That's a good attitude there. Okay, so lower the nose now, and then release. Excellent. That's, that's feeling good now. Do I need to turn crosswind? Uh, not yet, so, um, yeah, that's about 900 foot now, so yeah, we can, good luck out for entering the turn. Excellent. You can just see the airfield there, so you can judge yourself now. And if we do another 90 degree turn there... Fantastic. Not enough rudder. <laughs> yeah. You can really feel it in a glider. Excellent, that's a very good sort of uh, downwind heading reference there. 600, that seems about right. Yep, so we're going to be in the ballpark. Sean wanted fixed wing pilots to know that they're back gliding at Kenley now, so those transiting the area need to keep the launch site at a safe distance. There's traffic in our uh, 10 o'clock left. So you can see he's outside of our zone, but that's a classic example of, you know, he's probably not aware that we're operating and he's very, very close to heading down our circuit leg. So when we're on the base leg, we uh, apply the approach speed, excellent. Your wings level there. And now start the turn on to final approach. Nice and gently, excellent. It's quite severe, isn't it? The, uh, it is, yeah. And obviously this part of the airfield slopes away. Of uh, fixed wing balloon there <laughs> as well. <laughs> Excellent, no, it's uh, first uh, sort of all you fly on the circuit, brilliant. Magic, I enjoyed that. Excellent. Really cool. My thanks to the Volunteer Gliding Squadron and the Kent Gliding Club. Next time we'll see India Victor get a brand new set of covers. That's all. Fly safely, my friends. <laughs>